Hello. Today I will show you how to use the Roku markers to augment webcam video and input images of video using Python with OpenCV. Let's start with a short plan of what we will do. First, we will prepare the video setup for our camera. Next, we will create and detect the Roku marker. After that, we will augment the Roku marker with an image. And we will finish with video augmentation. For this project, we will need an OpenCV Contrib Python library. The difference between this and the OpenCV Python library is that this one has the Roku model. Also, we will need NumPy. We will start by preparing the video setup. First, we need to import OpenCV library. Import CV2. Next, we need to initiate the video capture. Most of the time your camera will be auto-detected using only zero, and that should be enough. Next, knowing that the video is just a bunch of images or frames, we need the while loop to go through them. We write while true, and we need underscore comma frame equal to cap.read, to read all our frames. I'm also adding one additional line to rotate a video by 180 degrees. Use this line if your camera is rotated 180 degrees like mine. To show the frame, we write cv2.imshow and in brackets we add window name, input, and source of what we want to display, frame. What's left is to add a couple of lines which will help us close the window and stop the code. We add if condition to close the window when the escape button is pressed. If the condition is true, it will break the loop. And we finish by destroying all windows. Let's run the code to test it. We can see the input window and that the webcam is working. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will create the Roku marker. Ok, so the Roku marker looks like this. Roku markers usually are used for camera pose estimation, but they can be used for any tracking we want. Roku markers are used because the detection is robust, fast and simple. The author of this page is Oleg Kalachev. Check the video description for a link to this page. Here you can simply create the Roku marker. You just need to select the dictionary. The bigger the size, the more unique IDs can be generated with that dictionary. We'll generate the smallest 4x4. Next, we need to choose the ID, let it be 7, and the size 100mm. At the bottom you can save it as SVG or PDF. Let's move to the code. Ok. First, what we want to do is to import a Roku. Import cv2.aroco as a Roku. Next, let's define the marker ID. We have ID 7. After that, we can define the Roku dictionary. Roku.get predefined dictionary and in brackets we write Roku.dict. Besides, we choose the same we created, 4x4, and we can choose how many unique values we want. Let's choose the lowest, 50. What else we need is to define the parameters. Roku.detector parameters create. Now let's move to the main while loop. Here we will detect our Roku marker. To detect the marker, first we need to convert the frame color scheme to grayscale. And after that, we can detect the marker. Roku.detect markers. In brackets, we define the image, dictionary, and parameters. As you can see, we will get three outputs corners, its corner coordinates of our marker, IDs, and rejected markers. We will use the first two, corners and ladies. Ok, so before drawing the detected marker, we need to check if we detected the right one. For that, we will create the if statement, we will check if we detected anything, and if we detected something, we will check if it is the ID we are looking for. If so, we draw the detected marker. In brackets, we define the image we want to draw on, it will be the frame, and what we want to draw, corners. I'm sure stays the same because we are drawn on the same frame. Let's run the code. Ok, now there is nothing. Let's bring the marker. Ok, it is detected. And you can see that the top left corner of the marker is marked with a red square. We can change the position of the marker however we want. It is detected very well. Let's move to the next part. In this part, we will use a Roku marker to augment the marker with an image. Ok, so basically what we want to do is to change our marker to the chosen image. We already detected the marker in its corners. 
what we need to do is to warp our image to the marker image position. Let's start by importing the NumPy library as NP. Next, let's define the image we want to warp on the marker. Ok, now let's move to the main while loop. Here we already detected the marker's corner coordinates. Let's print them to see how they look. Before running the code, let's change the weight key from 1 to 0. It will stop from looping. Let's run. Ok, you can see that it isn't clean list to work with. We'll need to clean this list before starting. You can see that coordinates are in two nested lists and coordinate pairs are in separate lists. Ok, let's redo the code as it was and comment the draw detected markers line. We will create a new function called augmentation. The inputs will be our markers corners. With np array we will read off the text in the list, but we will create an additional list. To restore the number of a list, we will select the first element with the list indexing. Next, the input will be the frame and the image we want to augment on the marker. Ok, now let's move up and create a new function. Let's name inputs as bounding box for marker corners. Our frame will be image and image augment. First, we need to unpack the bounding box. We will start at the top left corner's x coordinate. We will get it with list indexing. The first zero index will get us in the main list. The second zero index will get us in the first coordinate pair, and the third zero index will get the x coordinate value. The white coordinate we will get with 1. Next, we get top right, bottom right, and bottom left coordinate pairs. Next, we need to know the dimensions of the image we will use to augment. For that, we use the shape method and unpacking. Ok. Now we need to create new NumPy arrays with coordinate pairs for our bounding box and the image we will use to augment. Next, we need to transform the perspective from the image we augment in the actual bounding box. For that, we use the find homography method, which will calculate the perspective transformation matrix. Knowing it, we can warp our image with the warp perspective method. We just define the image we use to augment the perspective transformation matrix and the output dimensions. We still aren't finished. We get only the image on marker position. We also want to see the camera view outside the marker. For that, we will fill the marker position in the camera view with black color and after that we can stick these two images together by adding them. What's left is to return the image out. Let's run the code. The marker is replaced with the image we have and we can move the marker however we want. The marker stays detected very well. Let's move to the last part. In this part, we will augment the marker with the video. First, let's define our video. I will use GIF format because it runs smoother than a video file, but you can use a video if you want. Next, we need some new variables. The first one will be detection and the default value will be false. The second variable, frame count, is to count video frames and loop the video. The starting value will be 0. Also, we need marker size variables. We can choose any values we want because we need these values just to initiate the process. The size will be changed to necessary in the augmentation function. After that, we can read the video augment to get the one frame and resize it to the marker size. Ok, that's it for the start. Next, we need to move to the main while loop. Here we first create an if statement to hold the video if the marker is not detected. If detection is false, the video shouldn't start, so the frame is set to 0 and the frame count to. Else, we get the image video. But first, we need to have one more if statement to loop the video. We check if the number of frames we counted is equal to the frames the video has. If it is, we reset the video and frame count. If not, we get the image video and resize it to the marker size. And what's left is to write detection is true when you find the right marker, change image augment to image video, and increase the frame count by 1 at the end of the while loop. Ok, we have a marker augmented with the video. Let's run the code. Looks good. That's how you can use Aruko markers to augment webcam video with input images or video. Hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. You will find the code in the video description. 
If you liked this video, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more Python videos.